You're listening to The Power Project. I'm your host, Brandy Vogt, and it's my goal each week to inspire and empower you to go out and lead purpose-filled lives while owning your God-given power. This week, I had the opportunity to sit down with one of my great and lovely friends, Miss Vicki Smith Lockhart. We discussed all the things. We are talking fashion, body types, knowing your worth. We talk about how exposure to dreams and goals helps young people to strive for those. We call out Sarah Jakes to be on the podcast. And we discuss last 90 days as well as Vicky's new challenge, Fit to Fashion. I know that you are going to love this interview with my good friend. So without further ado, let's jump right in, shall we? Welcome back to The Power Project. I have a beautiful guest with me today, Miss mm-hmm. Vicki Smith Lockhart. If you guys follow my Instagram stories or my Facebook and you saw some outfits that I recently had in Nashville that literally got all of the attention, then uh, this is the brainchild behind that wardrobe she is the owner ceo of the fashion den dallas yes yeah so we've been hanging out over in the fashion den today and just talking about all the everything everything all the things like and we didn't get anything recorded no no i'm like wait we need to record this we need to put it get some audio get some video So the studio that we're in is uh, next door, you guys. This is your place here. Right. All right. And there is some magic that takes place in this room. I did uh, an episode right before this with our friend Shandon. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look, I'm usually like in my closet. I'm like in the middle of my bed with pillows piled around. I've done it in my car where I've got like blank, like a blanket around the mic so we don't echo. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So like, innovative. Nothing stops her. That's uh-huh, the great thing. Uh-huh. About it. Yeah. So this is fancy. Like yeah. we fancy today. Or just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like we got noise, green, screen. green, green screen. I got yeah. noise pa- canceling panels. Like I got all the tech, all the mics. Yeah. And you guys were so gracious to just let me come in and set up camp today and do some interviews and have the discussions. Because we don't have company. You're at home. (laughs) This is home. Thank you. No, I really have been, I felt, totally felt like I was part of the family today. So thanks for that. I mean, I don't have a lot of friends I can call and say, hey, can I borrow your media recording studio today? I never thought about it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a good quality. I mean, it's a a good edge. Yeah. I'll drive 81 miles for that. Because you did come along, uh-huh, uh-huh. and we appreciate it too. I know, I know. You know, for for good clothes and good friends and good combos, and everything you put on though, like is amazing. Uh, you bring out the best in the clothes and the outfits. Oh, they're just so fun. I mean, so fun. I really love. I don't like to like, you know, look like everybody else. Right. 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 I like to I like to have a little something different. Mm-hmm. I like to kind of like go against the flow, and and that's what. This really isn't a commercial for Fashion Den. Yeah. This is just shameless <laughs> plug, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> but that's what the Fashion Den clothes really are to me. Like, they're super unique and creative, and you're great. Like, you're like, try this, try this, try this, try yeah. this. Throw on the feathers and the sparkles and the sequins. So I'm really, really big on body types now, right? Mm-hmm. So when I opened a year ago, I really didn't have any idea what I was doing. I just like clothes, like, and I like to shop. And my husband was like, "Okay, let's do it. Let's monetize your let's hobby. Let's monetize your hobby." <laughs> I did have a a, a vision board, so uh-huh. my vision board is not really just a boutique. It's okay. a place where mothers and daughters could come, or you know, you have your millennials and your your older people, your baby boomers or whatever, and they can come and sit and chat and talk about life. They can talk about outfits they can you know help each other put outfits together hey you need to do this why don't you try that so that's what the den is all about right and great conversations Mm -hmm. but once I got into it I saw that everybody likes these outfits everybody wants to look like the superstar that they idolize or whatever but we have to pay attention to our body types Uh uh-huh you know Uh uh-huh so like have you like do you follow like Jennifer Lopez on Instagram I follow Jennifer Lopez. What is she doing? What who's so, who has she sold her soul to? 
man. All I know is the girl is. Fine. Oh, I mean, kill like at like fifty one ish. Yes, Did, somewhere at fifty ish. The the dress that she wore, how many years ago? Oh, she the brought green. back that green. Oh, uh, was it a Versace? Was it, Versace? it was was it Versace? I think it was Versace. I think it was. She walked in Milan uh-huh. and then again in Paris, and it killed it more now in it than twenty years ago. Hmm. Right? Yes. Which started me on a whole journey. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Fit for fashion. Yes. Because we were in Milan. I went for fashion week. Um, And one thing I noticed, Brandy, is that I'm not fit for fashion. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Now, wait. Now, now hold up. Now, we're talking like, we're talking like we got, we got different body style, body types. And that's the whole point. So, when I say I'm not fit for Mm -hmm. fashion... I'm not saying that you have to be a certain size. Right. Okay. Right. I'm saying that we are all built a certain way. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So even if I were to gain weight, if I were to lose weight or whatever, there are certain clothes that look good on my body type. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, knowing my body type, I need to make sure that I'm fit. Right. For my body type. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now before you before you were in Milan and you decided like I'm not fit for fashion right now, were you were you working out, exercising? Did you have a routine or just kind of like rolling? I was just rolling. Like I haven't worked out. Um, we have an annual showcase every year. Okay. So last I guess September October I got a trainer. We did meal preps or whatever. And I got into the dress that I wanted to get into for the the showcase. Oh, oh, wait. Did, didn't Oprah speak about this like years ago? Probably. That when you have that one goal that you're shooting like mm-hmm. so hard mm-hmm. for. I'm mm-hmm. going to let you keep going and tell mm-hmm. me what happened after the mm-hmm. showcase. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. After the showcase, um, life happened. The holidays, Christmas, um, the trainer went on vacation. So when January came around... It was hard for us to schedule, like get our schedules back in sync. Mm -hmm. So I would try to get on the treadmill at home a couple of days or whatever. But I just fell off. I got busy, Mm -hmm. you know, and I just did not keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. And that happens like so often. Mm -hmm. And and like I want to be really clear on this. Like what we're talking about is being the best version of yourself. That's it. Being the healthiest version of yourself. You know, we could go into all the things that the exercise does that is good for us. Mm -hmm. But it really is truly saying like. My body's a temple. I'm taking care of it. And and one thing that's been, like, on my mind a lot is know yourself, know your work. Mm -hmm. So as a school counselor, I would tell the kids all the time. I had a can, a Sprite can in my office. Um, It was a quote from Drake. And it said, know yourself, know your worth. Well, that is every part of you, though. Mm -hmm. Like, not just... You know, knowing that you don't like this type of ice cream or I don't like that boy or whatever. You have to know who you are, Mm -hmm. um, what you're made of from your core, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And when you start talking about your core and I start doing research on body types, right? Mm -hmm. And they said like a lot of times people look at where they are. Like if I've gained weight, then I may have a little bit more fluff and they'll say, well, you are a pear or you are a spoon body. Oh yeah. Like apple Uh shape. Uh shape, Yep. Uh, But really if you go deeper and you push past that and you look at your rib cage and your shoulder, whatever, Mm -hmm. I think it was an endomorph, an exomorph and a mesomorph or whatever. Oh, you could tell us anything and I would be like, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And I just listened to the podcast, (laughs) like a YouTube video yesterday and that's how I did Okay. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting interesting because from your core you need to know who you are and so when you start doing changes Mm -hmm. you know where you're going and you're not judging yourself by somebody else okay it's about knowing yourself so it's not about like I can't go through on the outfit that J-Lo wore yesterday and it looked the way it's supposed to look on me is that where we're going with look if, if if you put that outfit on and it doesn't look the way it's it looked on her maybe it's not that you're not good enough for that outfit or that you something's wrong with you it may not fit your body type maybe that outfit doesn't serve me it just doesn't serve you yes it was made for her 
I love that. I love that that's like, I, I mean, we've talked about this all day long today. So I'm like, oh, I got to get like all of the things on the episode. And and so your vision with the with the boutique and with the clothing really is for, first off, you've already created exactly what you had on your vision board. You have built a place, a safe place that people mm-hmm. come to have relationships and mm-hmm. community and conversation. Like, I mean, listen, first time I walked in, like I had 12 new friends. Yes. <laughs> automatic. Yes, automatic. <laughs> I love it. I love the conversations we have. And so you've created that community and that mm-hmm. space where it feels like a girlfriend's place mm-hmm. to hang out. But your bigger vision with it now is moving into this clothing for your body mm-hmm. style mm-hmm. and helping people get helping people look the best they can and be comfortable right. in their skin, right? Right. It, it's I said earlier like a teacher store. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I want to have the posters up of the different body types and what complements that type of body type, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's not just you feeling bad because, I mean, just imagine this. Imagine going to a store or looking online and finding this outfit and you just admire it, right? Like, it's just the coolest thing ever. I got to have that outfit. And then you go and try it on and it looks a mess. <laughs> Like your feelings are hurt. You're thinking, oh, I gotta lose weight. I gotta do things. <laughs> and it's not that something's wrong with you. That just was not the outfit for your body type. It would save a whole lot of time, you know, with you trying on a hundred outfits, coming out feeling like hey, nothing worked. Well, you didn't try on the type of outfit that works for you. Yeah. I yeah. was in New York and we went shoe shopping. And every pair of shoes I tried on, when I tell you they were bad, they were bad. (laughs) Okay? But what I learned was that I was looking at some cute shoes, but my ankle is narrow. So they never, my shoe, it looks like there's a gap. Uh Uh-huh. Like, it looks like the shoe is too big. I have the same problem. So instead of me wearing a closed back shoe, I have to wear like a sling back. Me too. Yeah, like a sandal type. Yes, because the little slip. I'm like, uh-huh. I didn't, girl, it was a slip-in stiletto. Like, uh-huh. pop, I know, I know. And I have the girlfriends that rock it. Yes. Do you have a high arch? Yes. Me too. See what I'm saying? Yep, yep. I know exactly. And I love the shoes, and I bought them, and I bought some nice-named shoes mm-hmm. for so long before mm-hmm. I said no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have to have an ankle strap. Mm-hmm. I have to have something different going on than what is happening with that shoe. It took one person teaching me. And telling me that your 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 um, ankle is just narrow, and that's why you're picking out some great shoes, and it's not you. It's you're just picking out the wrong type of shoe. That shoe didn't serve your ankle. It didn't serve my ankle. So then the fashion <laughs> den, if the fashion den can say, "Hey, it's just not for your body type." Yeah, I think that's so good, and. This isn't even like an episode just about fashion or clothing. It's just, uh, it's where we're going today because we've been talking about all the things. So a good example of this, my dad, when I was younger, he would take me like on a a shopping spree every time I got straight A's, which it was my job, by the way, to Mm -hmm. get the straight A's, but whatever, Mm -hmm. I'll take it. it. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he took me shopping. I'll never forget. And he came out and I was like a bean pole with these little bird legs. Mm -hmm. I mean, like. I knew, I knew, I knew my weaknesses, right? right? right, right. Knobby knees, skinny legs, you know, that whole thing. And he gets this, like, it was like, you know, 90s, early 90s. So this ruffled, like, denim Mm -hmm. short Mm -hmm. dress skirt thing. And he's like, oh, my gosh, try this on. I think it's going to look so cute. I was like, Dad, it it doesn't work for my body. Mm -hmm. I mean, in all the wisdom that I had at, like, 11. At 11, you knew. Uh Uh-huh. And he says, no, just do me a favor. Try it. Right. Okay. And I put it on. I came out, and he's like, oh, you're right. It doesn't work for your body. See? See? Yes. And it it wasn't the skirt's fault. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't. Just you just have work. to pick out the right types of things. And the same thing, like, if, if, we, if we are to transition from fashion to life, right? Mm. Oh, oh, oh. The other thing that I would tell my students and tell people is that you have to have your top five. Your top five values, right? Okay. So your top five values navigate the people that you have in your life and around you. 
Oh, okay. So we got our top five fashion things that service. Yes. And our top five values that navigate the people around you. That makes sense. It's kind of like when you're when you're teaching branding, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And social media marketing. Yes. What are your five things that serve you? What are your five things that make you up? Right. So it's the same thing we're just putting into fashion and life and branding. And it all goes together. That was one thing that we talked about today. Yeah. So a lot of people think, oh, you do a lot. So we talk about Brandy, the entrepreneur, Brandy, the um, podcast, podcast host. host, Brandy, the skincare maven, Brandy, the speaker, Brandy, the <laughs> author. <laughs> so it sounds like a bunch, right? Yes. But they all connect. Yeah. And I think that's like we're talking about your vision with with the boutique and, mm-hmm. and attaching it, and we're going to go into a little bit more here about your philanthropy and, and all the things and the nonprofit. Yes. And I think that's where people get it so mixed up. Mm-hmm. Like, look, we spent a few minutes on this podcast talking about fashion. Right. Right? But talking about how fashion can serve us. Right. But then it doesn't have to be separate from what our purpose is. We, right. can, we can serve our purpose doing anything, mm-hmm. anywhere. Mm-hmm. Who are we interacting with? How are we making them feel? How are we impacting the world? while we do it right and so i think when you get to the intersection where you realize that all the things Mm -hmm. that you love that fuel you that Mm -hmm. make you money right because ain't none of this free right and we gotta have the coin to build the things yes and to do the good and to give back but when you get to a point where you're like look i can love skincare Mm -hmm. i love what it does for my face i love what it does for my family right right I can love the money it generates, but it's a bigger thing than that. Yours is a bigger thing than fashion. Mm-hmm. It's the community you're building, the relationship you're building, the platform you're building, the storefront that has people coming in every day, right? Telling you their stories, telling you their dreams, mm-hmm. telling you their struggles. Mm-hmm. So, what do you see on that? Just like let's say five years from now, hmm. what what is your vision? If you were just to shout out your big audacious goal with that. Oh, wow. Where would it be if you could turn that into any type of a purpose journey bigger than what it is? Okay, so I thought about it the other day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we're in Oak Cliff. This is the community that I grew up in, right? Mm-hmm. And for those of you, like, not in the area, not in, in Texas, in, North Texas area. Right. So I feel like sometimes this area gets a bad rap, mm-hmm. right? But there is... There's so many great things here. So what I would want to do the next five years, I would see being able to reach out into the community. And I saw it like everything the other day. Uh And someone who is homeless, if I could give them an opportunity to come in and transform their lives, you know, Uh give them a job, an opportunity something that they can go on and then they reach out and they help other people and it just it's a snowball effect Uh you know uh so just taking something that other people may have thrown away and bringing them in cleaning it up and showing their worth and teaching people their worth Uh you know yeah well you know and I think so what I think people need to understand at home is there's not just a boutique next door we're not just in a podcast studio like you and your husband are are multi level entrepreneurs, right? right? I call myself and my husband serial entrepreneurs. Right, right. We're gluttons for punishment. Right. So, so when you're talking about this vision, like I'm seeing, like I can see all the stages of it. Mm-hmm. This episode brought to you and funded by Powerful Beauty. Are you thinking right now that you've heard enough and you are ready to start your own purpose filled business? Well, then I think you should head over to the-powerproject.com forward slash powerful business. Watch my video, read my story, and then book a discovery call where we can chat about how you too can be running your very own business full of purpose. That's the-powerproject.com forward slash powerful business. Tell our listeners what all the things are that you have going under your entrepreneurial hat. Okay. So we have we started out in 2003. We opened a barbershop. 
From 2003, we expanded to a salon. So it's a barbershop and beauty salon collect connected. And since then, we've added a nail artist. And I think you guys met yes. Miss Shandon. Yes, yes. we interviewed finished. her before you. Yes. Yes. We, um, we expanded um, with other stylists who do different things like esthetician, makeup artist. And then we opened the boutique. We opened the boutique and then a few months later, maybe six months later, we opened the section or the part of the building that we're in now. And we added um, my future counseling office, my husband's construction office. There are a few suites for hairstylists and makeup artists and esthetician and then the studio. So all the things. All, All the things. things. And I can see like the groundwork being laid mm -hmm. for, for your vision. Mm -hmm. Because I was listening to a podcast or an audible book. It may have it may have even been Tom Bill which I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. About the statistics of your success being attached to your zip code. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real thing because mm -hmm. when you don't have an opportunity and when you don't have someone willing to reach a hand out mm -hmm. and pull you up. Mm -hmm. When you don't have entrepreneurs that say, I'm going to set up shop right here mm -hmm. and we're going to build this right here and I'm going to mentor you right here. Right here. Then, then the odds of you finding that success or knowing it, like it's hard for you to reach for something that you don't see. Right. And that's something our nonprofit, um, Imagine Well, we're huge on exposure. Mm -hmm. So I went to Skyline High School and it was a career and development center, right? Mm -hmm. Within Skyline, I was able to leave high school and go to a Four Diamond Hotel, the Fairmont Hotel, and work and learn the ins and outs of that hotel, mm -hmm. right? So it's very important for me to expose the people I'm around, whether it's a child or an adult, to things that may seem out of their reach. I tell uh -huh. people I became a teacher because I saw my teacher. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. As I got further into the school system and saw how things worked, then I became a counselor. Uh -huh. And then you can expand to a diagnostician and the principal. So there are many levels if you dig a little deeper. Uh -huh. But if that's all I see is on the surface, uh -huh. then who's going to expose all the possibilities that could happen? It's so it's so important. I mean, and I'm I'm just sitting here thinking about even like in you can look at small towns yeah. where it's like, you know, I, like I can speak personally to, you know, some of the, the smaller rural towns and, and if they only see like, okay, well I can become a teacher or a nurse, mm -hmm. which, which was, you know, a couple generations back. That was, that was your options as right. a female. Right. Right. And then it was like, well, if I really want to be successful, then I can be a lawyer or a doctor. Mm -hmm. But if they don't see anything else mm -hmm. that doesn't fit into the box, they don't know that they can achieve that, right? Right. Like, I mean, I, I didn't know that I could be a podcast host. Exactly. You until know? you were introduced to it. Until I was introduced and to it. it. And then I tried it. And I was like, I, I don't know. Maybe we can do this thing. Maybe yeah. we can have a crazy dream. And you started a nonprofit with your passion for teaching, pouring into others, mm -hmm. counseling, mm -hmm. your own upbringing, and, and someone else speaking into you. Exactly. So... How beautiful is that? Yeah. I love it's that. Got, it's got all over it, though. But it's also, and I think that if if I allowed boys on the podcast, I would have Mr. Lockhart sitting right next to you. Yes. But it's a girls-only club. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's enough boys-only clubs. This right. is a girls-only club. I love it. Yeah. So I think it's so important, and I say this, all the founders of my skincare company said one year at convention that the most important business decision you make is who you marry. Mm -hmm. And I could have that written on every wall in my house mm -hmm. and never get tired of it. You guys are a true, true power couple. Do you find, um, and we were talking about this, about mm -hmm. how, you know, my husband and I both have like similar business minds. Right, and right. now it can be an iron sharpens iron situation oh, yeah. where I'm like, I'm sharp enough. Quit sharpening me. Right. <laughs> like enough. Yes. Where's it coming from? It's enough. Mm -hmm. But I also find that like where one excels, you mm -hmm. know, the other may lack and then it's the yin and the yang. Definitely. So were you, were one of you more entrepreneurial minded than the other? Definitely. Yeah? Definitely. Which one? So Eric is more, you know what? I'm going to say he's more 
business minded. Okay. Um, I think we both have the entrepreneur spirit. Uh huh. Um, I'm a giver. Uh huh. I told you earlier, my uh -huh. word is help. I'm a helper. Uh -huh. So if I, whatever dollar I make, I'm going to give it away. So uh -huh. I'll give you the shirt off my back, yep. right? But you said one thing earlier, and it's about the coins, right? Uh -huh. So not saying that everything is centered around it, but it takes the coin to really give uh -huh. and to do those things that you want to do. And Eric has that gift uh -huh. about him where uh -huh. he can, Eric is going to stretch a dollar. Yes. As a matter of fact, when we were dating back at Skyline, um, our first, his first time taking me home, I was like, he is so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just that he's frugal and he knows how to manage money and uh -huh. he does it well. Uh huh. I'm pretty frugal myself, mm -hmm. like in all honesty. I'm not a big spender. Mm -hmm. um, I'll spend on quality, but, yes. but not necessarily like just quantity, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that my husband always said, like, oh, my gosh, like, you would just give away everything that you made. Yeah, and that's me. <laughs> but I'm like, uh, I mean, I also know it takes it takes money to do the things, like, to, to mm -hmm. build the nonprofits, mm -hmm. to be able to provide the mentorship. And that's what I love about the, amb the ambitious, driven person that is attached to purpose, right? right because right. we had a bunch of driven people in the world making money and not doing anything with it. Right. And I'm like, I'm not impressed by your mm -hmm. toys. Mm -hmm. Show me what type of impact you're making in the world. Mm -hmm. Have the toys. Right. That is great. Take the trips. Mm -hmm. But what part of purpose are you attached to? What impact are you making there? Yeah. My pastor um, years ago asked a question in one of his sermons, and it's, can God trust you with a blessing? Oh, and that's a good one. That is such a good one. Right? Like, yeah. can, can God trust you with a blessing? If I were to give you X, what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be like the one who hid his talent and planted it in the sand, buried it in the mm -hmm. sand, you know, mm -hmm. or are you going to make something with it, make something happen with it? Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like none of us are getting out alive. Right. None of us are taking our money with us. Yes. But what did we do on this planet to bring glory to him? Mm -hmm. So on that, on the same, on the subject with, with um, partnerships and spouses, do you ever find... And I know now, like, mm -hmm. you guys are so, like, synced, right? Yeah. With business, with drive. Like, you guys are the cutest little couple. Like, I love it. I love it. But has there ever been a moment in the in the process, right, in mm -hmm. the building? Because mm -hmm. we're not going to sugarcoat it. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. It's, it's, business. it's business. We got good years, bad years, ups, downs, good months, bad months. We have rocking times. We have rocking times. <laughs> Listen, we've had times where I'm like, babe... If we if we're the last ones on the island, we got each other. Let's just hope that that boat doesn't go down. That's coming for us, right? You know. Huh. So, has there been a time that one of you has just had to really have like the conversation where like, no, we're doing this. Like, it can be hard, but let me just give you a little pull and bring you along, and let's keep going, and let's keep fighting, and let's keep chasing that vision and that dream. Hmm. I can say that that conversation comes from more timing. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You know, so it's gonna happen. We ain't quitting nothing. Uh huh. Like we're gonna do this. Yeah. And we're gonna put everything that we have into it. Uh -huh. um, I think when we first started building from the barbershop. The one barbershop because we have another one in DeSoto. Uh huh. So the DeSoto. And this is little, like a, and I actually need everyone to like visualize this. This is like a proper gentleman's barbershop. And so it's a grooming studio. Uh -huh. It's a grooming studio. And it came about, the barbershop side came about. My husband's mom passed when he was 13, 12, 13. Uh -huh. And the one constant that he had was the barbershop. Uh huh. And that was the place that he would go, and it made him feel comfortable. But one thing that he didn't like was the language and the, you know, sometimes the vibe, uh -huh. especially for a mom and a son, you know, a single uh -huh. parent having to take their kid or whatever. And so he wanted to create an environment to where everybody felt welcome, uh -huh. you know, and it wasn't a lot of conversation, inappropriate conversations, inappropriate music or whatever. And then it extended to the hair salon because, of course, his wife doesn't know how to do hair. <laughs> Imagine that. 
<laughs> so give me a salon where I can get my hair done anytime I want. Somebody please help her. He said happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So and that's where that the that aspect of the vision came from. Uh -huh. And then I had a fashion background just growing up and you talk about people reaching out in the community. So I was a part of the Junior Mahogany Models of Dallas. Oh my gosh, Met so these good. people so at good. the Recreate Singing Hills Recreation Center, right? Uh huh. And it was more than just modeling. Okay. It was they were using modeling to model for us to model what young women should represent. Okay. Okay. So that's how the fashion... Good experience. Good impactful experience. Great impactful experience. And those two ladies, Stormy and Yvonne, from their vision led me to want to do Imagine and give back to young girls. How cool is that? Right. And when did you leave the education field? Just last year. Just last year. And I know that we talked about you missing it. Like oh, missing the kids, right? Missing the kids. See, yeah. and I have, that's what I was going to ask because I have, I have different friends that have left education mm -hmm. and, and just the bureaucracy of it and the mm -hmm. red tape mm -hmm. and, and not being allowed to really be the teachers and serve the kids that, you know, what they signed up for mm -hmm. their original mission, but they love that interaction with the young people and pouring into the young people. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that with the fashion den and with the nonprofit, mm -hmm. you are being able to still plug in with these kids. Yes. And, and be the hand that reaches out and, and the person that says, like, come here, let me show you. Let me show you a successful entrepreneur in your neighborhood. And that was part of it. Like, not just talking about it, but being about it. Because the saying is, those who don't teach. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yep, I've heard it. So what I wanted for my students and those kids that I come in contact with, I wanted them to see how a teacher... Could go from being a teacher to a counselor, mm -hmm. from a counselor to owning her own boutique, mm -hmm. and still be reachable. Uh huh. You know, yeah. I just want them to see that you can live out your dream. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to be stuck in one arena. You can do as much as you want. That's like the the biggest obstacle I see, like for people having to overcome all over, mm -hmm. is just getting stuck in that box that they have been placed in. Right. And not realizing their full potential, which is the whole reason that we're here today right. on this podcast. Yes. Because I just got to show them people that are doing it. That's it. And you're doing it. Well, glory to God. You've done it. And we all can do it. And that's the whole point. Like, it's it's a little girl from Oak Cliff, Singing Hills, that has done everything that she ever wanted to do. Period. Like, there, I cannot say I'm 45. I turned 45 this year. And I have done everything that I've wanted to do. And now it's time to just continue to reach out and expand my reach. Mm -hmm. So Eric and I were in Europe last week. And the one thing that we talked about is expanding the reach. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of my words that do you know what power stands for in the power project? Talk to me. Purpose, ownership, wisdom empowerment and reach See? because you, if you're not reaching all the people that God needs you to reach, mm -hmm. if the people around you look like the same faces day in and day out, year in and year out, right? If you're going to church with the same people mm -hmm. every week, mm -hmm. eating dinner with the same people every Thursday, mm -hmm. you're not reaching the people that God has, has intended for you to reach. And it's the same thing we talked about with the fashion den and, and mm -hmm. all the stages and the layers of the brand. Yes. Every single person that I come in contact with, in some way or another, I can serve them. Yes. With something I'm doing. With something that you're doing. And and in the something that you're doing, this is what gets me. It's just you being you. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that you're doing that's not you. Or part of your purpose. Part of your purpose. That you don't really have to go seek out. Mm -hmm. You just have to get really intentional about who you are. Who God created you to be. Mm -hmm. What gifts he gave you that are uniquely yours. Right. Do you follow Trent Shelton? No. Oh, 
my gosh. You mentioned so many cool names oh, today. Listen, I'm like a personal development junkie. Like, business. I just like, need you to write yes, all the names yes, down I'll, or text them to me or something. So he says his book, like I've been, I've just finished listening to his Audible, and he's mm-hmm. just such a great, incredible speaker. Former NFL talks about like what he thought his purpose in life was. Mm-hmm. And he talks about not having to go out and search for it. Mm-hmm. And he says, you were created for purpose, mm-hmm. on purpose, with purpose. Period. Period. And you, all you have to do is lean into that, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. listen and be obedient mm-hmm. like you're doing. Like, I was listening to Sarah Jake's um, last Love night. Love her. Love her. Changing your core. Do, do, you have a, do you have a contact, a connection? Can we get her on this podcast? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, 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 let's agree. Sarah Jakes, if you're listening. Come on, I mean, we're, we're just saying we need you in the conversation. Yes, and we do. Uh-huh. Because she is wise beyond her years, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. And her story is amazing. But we were talking about the changing your core. And we talked about a little bit just how people get stuck. Mm-hmm. But... If we were just to allow our core, and when I say core, you know, some people say, well, this is just who I am. This is just, Uh if you could expand your reach to see and be, if you see yourself the way God sees you. Oh, yeah. Uh And operate in that versus the way you see yourself. Uh Uh That in itself is powerful. That's why Fit to Fashion came to fruition Uh Monday. Monday. Like, I had to. I know. And I'm like, she comes in and she's telling me, oh, my gosh, you got to see this Facebook video I did. And look, at this is my goal. This is what I'm doing. I'm like, do you know about the last 90 days challenge that started today that I'm a part of? And she's like, no, no. No, it's just it's just God saying y'all are gonna do the same thing at the same time. Exactly, and that you're on the right track. Like that you're doing exactly what I need you to do, and mm-hmm. I need I need to see myself the way God sees me. Mm-hmm. I need to fully, with all intention, walk in my purpose, knowing that I'm walking in the direction that God has set. Ah, oh, listen, I had a young girl that told me the other day. She said you. Seem, she's like college girl, like yeah. sophomore in college. You're just so confident. You seem so confident. And I said, look, I had a great support system, like we talked about. Mm-hmm. I've always been a, a very self-assured person. Mm-hmm. But I know who I am in God's eyes mm-hmm. now. I know that what I'm doing is bringing glory to him. I know that I'm fulfilling my purpose, my calling through him. And that, there is no confidence that will rival that. Man, it's, it's, it's funny that you say that, okay? Because there was another lesson from Europe. Uh huh. So when I went over there and I talked to you about like they're unapologetically walking like in grace uh-huh. and elegance. Uh huh. Right? Yep. So I too grew up with my parents pouring into me. You know, uh-huh. you can do whatever. There are no limits. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You know, you can be what you want to be. Right. Yes. But with that, with having great parents, there was for me. People saying you're spoiled. Oh, yeah. You're that. So, Rich girl. Yeah. Yep. So having to try to fight against that, I often, instead of just walking in it, try to yep. beg down from it. Made yourself smaller. Uh-huh. Shrunk from it. Uh-huh. No more. Mm. No more. Mm. Mm-hmm. I know it. I know it. I got it. Like, I've always been too much. Yeah. But I'm actually enough. More than enough. More than enough. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that was something, I'm 45 years old, and it took me all this time to realize that it's okay for me to walk with my head up, walk in my purpose, knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt, beyond the fact that I'm Helen and Floyd's daughter, that I'm God's daughter. Oh, so good. Like, so good. It was so refreshing. I, it, it's like something just lifts off of you when you're like, it, it's not about like my husband's expectations, my parents' expectations, my kids' expectations, like my friends. Sure, it's how I show up for people. Yeah. But like, who does he say I am? Period. 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 Oh, this has been amazing. This I told I told Shannon earlier, like, we need to like once a month just come sit in this room and just record because it it's so I love you guys and I have so much fun with you. And we need to bring in like all of our other friends too and oh, just we should you know what the next one should be in the DM. 
We should. We'll have to throw some blankets and pillows yeah. up just to cut down on any echo. Yeah, we should just we should just do it in we'll the We'll just do it on the couch. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it on the couch. I love it. Tell me, you guys have a, do you have any events coming up that you want to shout out? We have a showcase coming up on December the 8th. All right. Um, It will be at, mm-mm-mm. Can I just go? The Highland. The Highland Hotel off of 75 and Mockingbird. Okay. 75 and Mockingbird, the Highland Hotel. It's a huge show. This is our fourth year doing it. We have uh, makeup artists, um, barbers, hairstylists, the fashion industry coming out. It's high energy. It's upbeat. It's fun. Um you don't want to miss that one. And it's and it's done as, is it done as a fundraiser for your nonprofit? It's done as a fundraiser for the nonprofit. We um, give out a scholarship. We, in the past, have given out two scholarships, one to a high school um, student um, from graduating from Skyline High School, which is our alma mater mm -hmm. in the um, cosmetology industry. We did not do that this time, mm -hmm. but we will give a scholarship to a person who will be graduating from one of the local um, barber colleges. I love that. I'm checking my schedule and seeing if I can yes. make that. You have to come. It is so much fun. It's in the city supports. Like last year, it was amazing. I love it. I love it. Tell everyone where they can find you so that when they keep hitting me up about the outfits I'm wearing, Aww. they know where to find you at. <laughs> We're the Fashion Den Dallas. The Fashion Den Dallas on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we're online at www.fashion-den.com. I have a hyphen in mine, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even mad about it anymore. Uh -uh, me either. It, yeah. It's a... It's a thing. I'm like, I'm the power project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been lovely. Thanks so much oh, for coming you. in with thank me today. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I, I love, love it. talking to you. I love it. It's just so natural. I know. I know. We just need to like find, I got to move. I got to move. We have, move. We have to get a middle ground or something. We have to meet somewhere. Maybe. Yeah. We'll, we'll take care of that. I got, I got an office coming soon that might be about ah, halfway. Uh, okay. And maybe we need someone to come build me a studio. I think Eric Lockhart can do that. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. he's a builder. We'll just, Master contract. Uh, of course, your family does everything. Coming at home. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. I don't mind. Plug away. <laughs> plug away. It's been awesome. It's always so much fun when I get to interview my real life friends in person like I did today. I hope that you guys enjoyed my time with Miss Vicki just as much as she and I did. And you can tell us just how much you enjoyed us by going ahead and writing a review, rating us on whatever platform you listen to us on, and sharing us with all of your friends on social media so that we can continue to bring you more conversations like these week in and week out. As always, I can't wait to chat with you next week, but until then, go out and live your best purpose-filled life.